Hi. Now in this question, we're asked to solve this modulus inequality. The mod of 2x minus 5 is greater than the mod of x plus 1. So if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video. Do come back when ready and you can check your work solution with mine. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Now, there's two ways that we can solve something like this. It contains two terms and each term has a mod round it. OK, so we can square both sides in cases like this. The other way is a graphical solution. I'll show you both methods, OK, in this one video. We'll start off, though, with squaring both sides. So if we're to do that, we'd have all of 2x minus 5 squared would be greater than all of x plus 1 squared. And therefore, if we square out each bracket, 2x all squared is 4x squared. We get twice the product of these two terms. The product is minus 10x. If we double that, we get minus 20x. And then we square the last term here, so that's going to be plus 25. And that's going to be greater than, and again, if we square this bracket out, similar procedure, you're going to have x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now we've got a quadratic here, so we've got to bring all the terms to one side. So I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides, subtract 2x and subtract 1 from both sides. So 4x squared minus the x squared is 3x squared. Then we've got minus 20x minus 2x, that's going to be minus 22x. And then 25 minus 1 is going to be plus 24. And that's going to be greater than 0. Next we need to factorise this. There's no common factors. It just breaks down to two brackets being multiplied together. It's going to be greater than 0. And it's going to be 3x and x to give us 3x squared. And for the 24, it's going to be minus 4 and minus 6. And you'll see that that gives us minus 18x minus 4x, which is the minus 22x. Now at this stage, we should be familiar with this. What we do next is to work out the critical values. That's where this would equal 0. And that would mean that each of those factors, 3x minus 4, would have to equal 0, or the other factor, x minus 6, would equal 0. And for the first one here, this would lead to x equaling 4 thirds. And for this equation here, it would lead to x equaling 6. Now that we've got the critical values, we draw a sketch graph showing the critical values on the x-axis. And I'm going to mark them in then as 4 thirds and 6. So I'll have 4 thirds here. It's not drawn to scale, just to give you a basic idea. And the graph we're drawing is the graph of 3x minus 4 multiplied by x minus 6, which is a parabola u-shaped parabola because it's got a positive x squared term, going to look something like that. And we want to know where this graph, the y values for it, are greater than 0. And that's where it's above the x-axis, and it's going to be greater than 0 for x values that are less than 4 thirds, or x values that are greater than 6. So we can say that, therefore, from the graph, okay, we just write that in. From the graph, we see that x has to be less than 4 thirds, or quite separately, x can be more than 6. Okay, so that's one way of doing it, and you can only apply that, as I say, if each of the terms either side of the inequality are positive. And they are because we've got the mod signs round both of them. So that's the squaring method. The other method is a graphical solution. 
And for this, we'll just draw up our axis, our Y axis and our X axis. And we start with the mod of 2x minus 5. Now, if there was not a mod around it, it would be just the graph of y equals 2x minus 5, which would be a straight line crossing the x-axis at 5 over 2, and it would have a gradient of 2. So it would be something, say, looking like this, coming down through here at 5 over 2, and then it would carry on down, okay, cutting the y-axis at minus 5 okay but because it is a mod graph okay this point here was 5 over 2 but because it's a mod graph this part of the graph cannot be negative it gets reflected in the x-axis so you end up with a graph looking like this okay and this point down here would have been at minus 5 this point up here is at 5 Okay, so that's the graph then of y equals the mod of 2x minus 5. Next, going to draw the graph of the mod of x plus 1. But we take off the mods, we're just looking at y equals x plus 1, which again would be a straight line graph. Gradient would be 1 from the 1x, and it would cross the y-axis plus 1. So it's going to be a graph, say, looking something like this. And it would normally carry on back down there like so. It would cross the x-axis here at negative 1. But this part of the graph is reflected back up. And it's going to look like that. So this is the graph then of y equals the mod of x plus 1. Now, what we're looking for is if this was to equal one another, it would be the points where the two graphs cross. That's that point there and that point there. I'm going to call this point A and this point here B. And what we're looking for is those two points. They would be our critical values. But we're looking for where this graph, which is the red graph, is greater than, above if you like, the green graph. And that's going to be, if we just project our values of x down from a and from b, where is the red graph above the green graph? Well, it's for values of x that are above this value here, out in that direction. Let's just mark it in with a solid line there. Out in that direction and from here out in this direction. Okay, so we've got to get a and b first of all, those x values that satisfy the equations. So let's start off at a, okay, so we've got at a, and at a we're looking at where this graph, okay, which is the graph of y equals x plus 1, intersects this graph which will be negative of all of 2x minus 5. So at a, we've got x plus 1 equaling the negative of 2x minus 5. And now we just need to solve this equation. And if I were to just expand the bracket out here, we get minus 2x plus 5. And then rearranging this, if I add 2x to both sides, I get x add 2x, which is 3x. And if I take away 1 from both sides, I get 5 take away 1, which is 4. And from here, it follows that if I divide by both sides by 3, x equals 4 thirds. So this point here then is at 4 thirds. Now we want to look at b. So if we just put at b. At B, we're looking at where this graph, the green graph, intersects this red graph coming through here. Well, this line here is positive 2x minus 5. So at B, we've got 2x minus 5 equaling, and uh, it's this green graph here, equaling x plus 1. 
And so again, just need to solve this. We can do it by subtracting x from both sides. 2x take x is x. And adding 5 to both sides gives us 1 add 5, which is 6. So we've got this point here, which is 6. So you can see we wanted values that were less than this one at a, which is less than 4 thirds, or more than this value of x at b, which would be more than 6. So again, we can see that from the graph, okay, we get that x must be less than 4 thirds, or x must be greater than 6. So two ways then of doing this question. It's up to you which version you take. This method though will always work for all types of inequalities, modulus inequalities that is. And uh, this one, as I say, can only be used where we square both sides in special cases where we've got two terms and both terms are positive.